Hey everyone, it's Mac. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to our second installment of Personal Foul. Uh, as I said, I'm Mac, and uh, on the other side of the screen, we got Derek Gervin, former NBA star, and uh, won a championship overseas, and uh, led the league in scoring over there. So uh, we are in the presence of basketball royalty right now, because uh, not only mm -hmm. was Derek a ball player, in the NBA, but uh, most basketball fans know that his brother George is a basketball Hall of Famer. And Derek, uh, first of all, thanks for joining me again. Uh, unfortunately, we have to start off with, you know, some rather sad news, uh, Bobby Knight passing away. Uh, uh, well, I, first, I wanna say good evening to you and to the listeners. Um, yeah, it just came across the television, what, within the last 30 minutes, so. Uh, I already sent my condolences on Facebook, and I'm a little sad because uh, you know we all we know the Bobby Knight had some challenges, some things he went through when he was at Indiana University. But at the end of the day, um, he also got a lot of his players to graduate, and we saw a hard, a hard outer core, I would say. But the guy really cared from the, deep in his heart about these players. Um, as you know, his most popular players is Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah. Uh, and so I want to send my condolences to his family. Uh, Bobby did a lot for the game of basketball. Um, if you remember, Mac, uh, and the listeners, he also was a guy that was very intelligent. And if you remember, when he watched Michael Jordan, when he played for Bobby Knight, when Bobby played for him, when he played for Bobby, I'm sorry, for the Olympic team, if you remember, they were going against Magic and Bird and all those guys. And Bobby Knight said at that time that Michael Jordan was the best player he'd ever seen. And this was before Mike even became Mike. So it just tells you what kind of vision he had as a basketball uh, coach, what kind of man he was. Some people felt that he really um, went overboard about some things. But at the end of the day, as you know, when the game is going on, a lot of stuff happens between the lines. But he's a man that cared about all his players and cared about people. So I want to send my condolences to Bobby's family. And I want to say this, that he really will be missed. And I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Yes, indeed. And no matter what anyone may feel about the man, you know, this is somebody uh, who is beloved by by somebody. You know, um, I don't know how many you know, children of his own he has, but, you know, somebody lost a dad today, a, a husband, a cousin, uncle, whatever. So, uh, you know, that's always, you know, tough, no matter no matter what. Uh, the person was like or what your thoughts are about that particular person. But uh, we're going to move on. Um, let's let's jump right into Well, before we do that, uh, I do want to mention my uh, streaming uh, network, M3 TV, is coming back. Uh, just early this evening, I was working on uploading some content and uh, in fact, if you're watching this uh, on video, chances are you're watching on M3 TV. So uh, if you're watching on M3 TV, especially, I welcome you. And I encourage you to keep us, you know, keep us on your minds. Check us out uh, periodically because we're going to be adding more and more new content. Not only and Mac, about, can I say this? Can, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut no, you go off. Right ahead. As you're adding more content, I hope our listeners also can add more people. Tell a friend about the show. Um, the show is going to continue to get better. It's going to grow. And you know it starts one person at a time. So please um, one person tell a friend time. to tune in one day. Check us out. I guarantee they'll enjoy it and they'll return and then they can tell one other person. Absolutely. And you know, this is only our second installment. Uh, I'm going to learn as I go along. I'm going to get better. I, I would like to think I'll... Uh, you know, I will rely on Derek mostly for, for comments. I might throw something in every now and then. Uh, we'll have a little bit of banter back and forth. But uh, while Derek will tell you that I'm making him uncomfortable when I say this, Derek is the superstar of this team. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, and, and, you know, there's no two ways about it. But, uh, and I, I'm, I'm on it to say that not only is Derek a teammate on this this show, but 
Derek has become a really good friend of mine in spite of the fact we have not laid eyes on each other in person. And we'll do that soon, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, enough of this love fest. I want to move forward. Um, let's talk about the Western Conference of the NBA. I, I mean, I got to keep going to the Western Conference because, and, and I get that it's, early. well, let me ask you this. What are your early impressions of, of uh, what you've seen? Well, my early impression is that um, Denver Nuggets, uh, as you know, I picked Denver last season. And so I wanted the champions always, you know, you're always the champions until someone knocks you off. So I wanted to see what kind of team uh, Denver had coming into this new year because uh, they lost two key players. They lost uh, Bruce Brown and they lost Jeff Green. So I wanted to see how they came out this year, um, another year of Jamal Murray being a little healthier. So I've been impressed with Denver right now. Uh, I think they're doing great. But the, the issue of the day, the story of the day is uh, what happened last night, the James Harden trade to the L.A. Clippers. Uh, well, I was going to get to that later. Okay, well, we can get okay. to it later. But, well, you know what? Uh, no, yeah, I'm just saying. I, I have, just... Well, okay, let me tell you first. I okay. have a list of things here on my iPad, on my tablet, and – that's like, well, that's like the trades. I, I call it stupid trade rumors. I'm not talking about the trade <laughs> itself. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, can, we can go ahead and talk about <laughs> oh, we gonna, that. No, we're going to let's, no, wait, rumors, wait, hold on, we're gonna get to that later. Let's cover that later because what you just said, I heard you clearly. We got the, the trade because we got some yeah. other people we want to talk about as well when we get to that situation. Yeah. So, I hear you we'll clearly. Talk about the, since you brought up Harden, we'll talk about that now. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, we will talk about the stupid trade rumors later on in the broadcast. So let's go ahead and talk about Harden. Uh, well, Mac, for me, I just the reason I brought him up is because um, just be, and not even talking about with the Clippers, what he's going to add or, you know, subtract from the team. Just the <laughs> fact that we've been hearing about the process for like, what, three or four years now in Philadelphia. And then it feels uh, like feels like long yeah, than like an eternity. It seems like an eternity. And then, see, me personally, I had a conversation last year, the 2022-23 season, early in the year. I had a conversation with Daryl Morey, who's the general manager of the 76ers. So I kind of got to know Daryl a little bit. And just to see this weighing over the team, you know, I thought that was crazy. So, you know, uh, Harden, I'm not going to talk about what I, what kind of impact I think he can bring to the Clippers, but the reason I brought him up is because this has been hanging over the NBA, kind of like the Dame Lillard situation. And so now that situation has been rectified. So, um, but let me tell you this. There's a few teams right now. <laughs> Go ahead. No, yeah. Oh, you know I'm jumping in. Big. You, you said you won't talk about what he adds or subtracts from the Clippers. But you know what? I'm going to take you there. I, I want you to talk about that because I think it's important that, you know, if we're going to discuss James Harden, let's talk about James Harden in its entirety. You know, a lot of the stuff that has gone on in Philly has been well documented. A lot of the off course stuff that went on with the Nets has been well documented in Houston. But, you know, I mean, he, he's, he, this might be his last shot. And so what do you expect him to bring? Wow. Well, let me start from the beginning, because first of all, as you know, and the listeners don't know, since 2014, Kawhi Leonard has been my favorite player. So I've been wanting to see Kawhi get another ring. You know, he has uh, two rings. He got a ring with the Spurs in 2014, and then he got a ring with Toronto, I believe, in 2019. So um, I want to see him get another ring. Uh, I'm a big Paul George fan as well. But my problem with the Clippers, as much talent as they've had, they've had mm -hmm. in the last several Preach, years, preacher. they don't have that, that glue character, I would call him. That guy that can calm things down when you're going through a little duress on the court. And they don't have a Chris Paul. And so it kind of would harden. I'm hoping that he can be that X factor as far as getting the guys into their sets in the half court offense. And then when uh, Kawhi might need a little tap on the shoulder or a whisper in the ear or Paul George or Westbrook or whoever it may be, I was hoping that Harden would be that guy when he gets there. But on the other side, I have to say the guy who came in the trade with Harden, P.J. Tucker, 
I think he'll be the guy, the, the glue guy, I'll call him. Because as you know, PJ won a championship with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, he's a tough guy and he's a no nonsense guy. And so when, when people, when PJ talks, people listen. So I'm also thinking that PJ can help James Harden because, uh, you know, sometimes James can get out of sorts. Uh, he can start doing, you know, over dribbling, uh, throwing the ball to guys, making late decisions. And so I'm hoping that things are going to go well. I want to see the Clippers make the West even more interesting, if that's possible, more interesting than it already is. And um, if you look at the Clippers <laughs> right now, we're, I mean, you just think about it. If you put it, that's just adding one more team into the fire. It's like seven or eight teams, realistically, that believe they probably can win. Don't you think that? Well, it's, it's yeah, and it's funny that you say, you talk about seven teams and adding one more team. See, it's and I said this, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna have to go now and dig out uh, last week's show. You know my comments about the Clippers. Mm -hmm. I I kind of started to go just a little bit left, uh, <laughs> but it but it has everything to do with their history. Your reputation precedes you. All right. And the Clippers dating all the way back to that Buffalo Brave days. I mean, it was a little bit better back then. But from the time they hit San Diego as the Clippers, they've just been a silly, silly organization. They get talent. Uh, you know, I, I, I already expressed how I felt about the talented knuckleheads back when it was Blake Griffin getting lobs and DeAndre Jordan and all that. You know, uh, and it feels like with Kawhi and with Paul George that they should be a more under control team, a more serious team, cut out yeah. some of the shenanigans. But it almost feels like we're looking at Lob City minus all the lobs. You know, <laughs> into, Really, in in terms I know, of the I mentality, hear you don't lie because it's true. <laughs> in, in terms of the mentality, and so yeah. it's hard for me to take the Clippers seriously. I'd love to see them. I used to be a big Buffalo Braves fan, so even though all these years have gone by, I still kind of sort of relate them to the old Buffalo Braves. You know, uh, the, I mean, I used to love Mac doing Randy Smith and Ernie D and all those guys. And those of you listening, if you don't know who they are, and Ernie D is Ernie D. Gregorio, go look those guys up. Just look up Buffalo Braves and Bob Mack doing a host of other names and pop up. And a lot of guys came through that organization, and a lot of guys continue to come through the Clippers organization now, and they have yet to get it right. And, uh, you know, I mean, I can't take them seriously right now. Okay, moving on. Uh, let, let's you know, we, we didn't talk about, and I don't know why this is. Well, maybe I got an idea why, but we didn't even mention uh, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies last week, you know, when we were talking about the West. Um, I'll give my thoughts real quick to me, and, and I'm not surprised that 0-4, they're starting out 0-4 is not a shock to me, um, but I guess I didn't talk about them. You didn't bring them up either. To me, it's kind of easy to overlook them right now, not because of the absence of John Morant. So, I mean, in part, yes, but I look at them the way I look at the Clippers. I, 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 it's hard to take them seriously because of all of the silly. I know they got rid of Dylan Brooks. That's a little bit of silliness walking out the door. That's good. All right. You replace him with a mature veteran like Jalen Rose. And just like you're saying about Harden with the Clippers, you know, I think Jalen Rose will be much more effective than Harden in that role. Uh, and I think that, you know, I, I think, I think they'll be in the hunt. I'm not surprised at all for, but I think that after 15 games or so of they hovering around the 500 mark, I think they're going to smell the finish line because it'll only be about 10 games or so before they get job back. And so if they could just hold the fort down for these first 25 games, well, then you, know, they, then you got to put them in the conversation. 
for me, the only reason I don't put the Clippers in there, of course, with Ja being out. And I, I wrote yesterday on Facebook about them just basically staying above board. And I know they're four zero and four, but there's also you got to factor in that Luke Kennard, uh, who led the NBA in three point shooting percentage last year, is out. Um, Stephen Adams is out for the year. Yeah, Brandon that's Clark, a tough loss. Yeah, and then remember they had two big men other than um, Mr. Jackson. They had Brandon Clark also from Virginia, University of Virginia, and Brandon got hurt last year. Him and Stephen, it wasn't that far apart when they both got injured. So Brandon will possibly be able to come back uh, near the end of the season after the All-Star break. But having that size missing is a big factor for me. Um, I think Memphis is a really good team. As you know, they were able to win without Ja. They played their record was just, was better without Ja than it was with Ja. And I'm not saying that it Ja was a detriment to the team. No, I get what you're saying. Percentage-wise. Yeah. Percentage uh, they, uh, they, they played they well. Better. But you yeah. got to look at um, – so you know, and then also they bring in Marcus Smart. I think that was a big addition. You bring in Smart and Derrick Rose. So that you got two guys that know what it takes to uh, – how to, you know, get things done. Uh, instead of getting frustrated, you have guys that can kind of reel in the behavior when these guys get a little out of control. Uh, but I think Memphis is a team that once Ja gets back and uh, they get um, – here's the only thing I'll say. With Brandon Clark being out, and Stephen Adams being out. I I'm, I know Jaron Jackson Jr.'s dad personally. Uh, we played together, and he's a personal friend of mine. I played with the Nets, and I played with him in the CBA, the Continental Basketball Association. And Jaron is really not a center. Jaron is uh, – we know they used to talk about Tim Duncan. What position is he really, right? Jaron is really a power forward. And, his, and it was exposed, basically, when they played in the FIBA games. Mac, if you remember, and if the listeners remember, Jaron is a more of a help defender. He's the reigning defensive player of the year. But the reason he's a defensive player of the year is not man-to-man -man defense. It's the, the havoc he created by roaming in the paint area. And he's a very, very good help defender. And I hope people hear me clearly. Agreed. Some people might not notice that. So when, well, what when you they Mm -hmm. What they – and tell me if I'm wrong. What I think they have to look for when Jaron Jackson's playing defense, when he goes away from his man but then has the ability to recover, and I think that's what you're talking about. You know, he could go and help, but, but he still has the quickness or the, or the agility uh, and the mindset to recognize it. I can't forget about my man. And he, he covers a lot of ground defensively. You know, he, he's long. His, his biggest problem are against guys like uh, Embiid who can put their body on him or Jokic, you know, really, really strong players. And the reason that is because he's not really a center. He's more of a power forward. So he would match up better with a Giannis than he would against a Jokic or Embiid. Um, he's a very good player, a uh, very good defender. But, you know, sometimes guys are playing out of position. And I'm I'm hoping they can make a move uh, maybe a, before the trade deadline, around the trade deadline, and bring in a big man. It, you all has mind. Be, it just has to be a serviceable big man where Jaron can play his natural position. And if they do that, uh, once Ja gets back, I think we'll be talking about the Memphis Grizzlies again, being back in the mix. Well, I guess it's way too soon. Here we go. It's way too soon to talk about trades and who might be available because the season just started uh and so once again any of you fans of any team who want to start talking about trade rumors stop it just stop it you're three games in stop it okay um let's talk about um well let, let's talk about the elephant in the room and that is the san antonio spurs <laughs> and the reason I say the elephant in the room, man, is because, you know, from the even before he got drafted number one, uh, Wimby has been the talk of the NBA. And I haven't seen a lot of him, but he made a play the other night. Got a, I think it was off a rebound. And <laughs> he, 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 I mean, he's. What, seven foot five? You've or never seen and the agility play before. And he just threw the ball over his head and it went in. And if you looked at the Phoenix bench, 
I mean, they look so deflated. They just couldn't believe that shot went in. <laughs> I mean, no, the camera, you know, I mean, because they were right behind where the play happened. And, you know, well, some guy looked away, another one, two, two guys, it looked like their shoulders slumped. It was like, oh, man, I can't believe this happened. But, I mean, he, he is something else. It reminded me of a guy named George Gervin. <laughs> Well, he's, 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 he's got the agility. No, I he's mean, definitely that got shot. the agility. No, I'm just saying that shot. Uh, if you watched last night, he also made another one. He made a shot backwards last night on, yeah, against Phoenix, the shot you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's the one I'm but talking if you, about. Yeah. If you remember, Mac, for the second time, he also got one of those reverse uh, highlight, dunk. one of those highlight left handed dunks. Yeah. And, and let me say this about Victor. Uh, I'm hoping some people realize he's just turning 19 years old. And I want people to really understand what I'm saying about him. Uh, I know some people have heard that he's possibly the best prospect that's ever come out. And I'm not saying that that's not true. Uh, myself, the best I've ever seen is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. But Victor has the total package. And he does have a package I haven't seen, in the, period, so far. But when you're playing for a five-time champion coach, Greg Popovich, Papa's not getting ready to turn the team over to Victor where every night it's the Victor Wimbenyama show because he's trying to, you know, he wants to win. And they have some other good, very good players. They have a guy uh, that I really love, uh, Devin Vassell, where number 24 on the Spurs. Uh, they have a gentleman, Keldon Young, Keldon Johnson, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Zach yes, Collins. Yes. They have a good team. Trey Jones is a good player. They have some really good players. Doug McDermott, who's been in the league over 10 years. So, Doug and Nick Buckets. Yeah, so so Victor's not expected to just come in and they just throw the ball have, down. He doesn't have to play the Shaq, the Shaquille O'Neal role right off the bat. He's more of a perimeter player, and Pop's letting him be himself. But eventually, you know, they're going to preach a preach about him being more around the basket. Because if you remember, he does have two guys in this city that are helping him, one by the name of Tim Duncan. I've heard people call the greatest power forward of all time. And then he has another gentleman by the number 50, David, David Robinson. Robinson. Yes, indeed. So it's a, it's a process, just like we talked about Philadelphia. It's not going to happen overnight. Victor is a very mature young man. He's a very good yeah. pastor. He has to learn the ropes, the, ins, the in and outs of the NBA. And once he does that, man, the Spurs are going to be, hey, they, they, they're going to be a team to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and you know, um, I absolutely expect them to be in the hunt in the second half. I mean, they might, you know, just like uh, Memphis, they might take their lumps in the first half. Although I don't know, I, I really think that with with a guy like Wimby, and this isn't to say that it's all on him, like you were saying, but I think his presence, his physical presence alone, it kind of changes things. And so they have somebody who, yeah, he's going to have to have a down low presence at some point, but man, sky's the limit for this guy. Matt, right now he has two deficiencies. One, as you already know, and the listeners know, is rebounding. He's not getting a lot of rebounds. He's getting like five, six rebounds a game, okay? And that's because if you look at the other deficiency, if people understand me that really understand the game of basketball, sometime when you come down, like I say, on a fast break, you'll see your big man pop in the lane. Uh, Anthony Davis is very good at this. They try to establish position really quick. And the problem is with Victor right now with that little thin body, um, you got guys like Grant Williams, who plays for the Dallas Mavericks, who used to be with the Celtics last year. Grant is about 6'4". 6'5", maximum, right? But he has that girth. He's a big guy. And so before Victor tries to post up, he bumps him off his gate, I call it. He knocks him off his position. He knocks him off balance. And see, right now, when they do that to Victor, he goes out to the perimeter immediately. So he's going to have to learn how to deal with the physicality because at some point, he's going to be dealing with guys like Draymond Green, Bam out of bio, and guys like that. So he's going to have to learn how to fight a little more for his positioning. But once he does that, watch out for the San Antonio Spurs. I think it's more than, more than you know, putting on a whole lot of girth. I think the more important thing is that he 
just learn how to position himself and hold so that he can and, get and, those rebounds. And that will come. The more you get it, see, this is another thing. Can I say this before we move on from the Spurs? Sure, absolutely. People have to, people have to also remember, Victor played over in France, okay? So it's a totally different game. It's a totally different competition. So this is an adjustment for him. First of all, you move into a new country, basically, right? You move into a city that you're unfamiliar with. The great thing for him is he has Tony Parker here, who was his uh, team owner in France. But the young man is making a big adjustment that he's never had to make before. He's coming to the NBA. He's coming to another country. He's getting paid more money now than he ever made over there playing for Tony. And it's a big adjustment. He has players here that he has to make sure he remembers to stay in chem to get in chemistry with. So he's been asked to do some things he's not used to um, doing. And it's going to take a minute. He's a 19 year old kid, but he's very, he's like a sponge. He picks up things very clearly, quickly. So the kid is his, his ceiling is uh, very, very high. He has unlimited potential, but it's not going to yeah. happen overnight. So I just want people to be patient and realize Give the man a chance. He's a young kid still. Give him an opportunity. You know what? Just that little snippet alone that you just said, I'm going to edit that out of this entire show, and I'm just going to take that. I'm going to put it on certain places where basketball fans can see it, especially Spurs fans. You know, uh, I think I think Spurs fans are going to be patient. Well, I mean. He's been terrific so far. I mean, again, I haven't seen a lot of them, but from what I have seen and from all accounts that I've heard, you know, he's been pretty damn good. And that's that's something the NBA should celebrate. OK, so uh, we may as well talk about the Nuggets. I mean, we, we know they're the champs. We know that, you know, they've had to replace a couple of key cogs. We know that they've gotten off to a really good start. Uh, we know that they are favored by many to repeat. But you're going to have those LeBron riders, and they're, gonna, they, they're already chirping. But I want to remind everybody, the Lakers, no. I'm sorry, they, they, the way they got beat the other night, they've gone back to being the fakers. The way they got beat the other <laughs> night by the Nuggets, okay, after talking all that junk. So this is why I pay is to just shut the hell up, all right? Just like with the Cavs last night, you know, uh, entering the game last night, the Cavs had something to say, and they got spanked on their home court. Guys need to learn to just shut the hell up and play. I understand that they've got a security blanket out there in Los Angeles and LeBron James. And you know what? Even with that security blanket, the fakers still got their asses beat. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they, 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 they made a little bit of a push, I guess. But I mean, you know, just shut up and play. And so I'm not believing in the fakers the way some people are and don't. Don't get me wrong. I get it's just one game. Don't get me wrong. I know it's just the beginning of the season. Do I expect them to be in the mix? Yeah. But I don't believe they're going to win the championship. Ooh. They're talking about it out in L.A. already, but they haven't done the damn thing. Oh, man. Oh, I have to respond. Uh, well, you got the floor. Well. Well, as you know, last year um, I talked about them on my show. My, you know, I do my podcast, and as you know, I talked about them when they were two and ten, and yeah, a lot of did. people had given, and a lot of people had given up on them. But I wasn't one of those people, and they end up making me look pretty smart uh, going to the Western Conference Finals, which is what I expected against my Denver Nuggets. I like the Laker team. I just think the biggest issue with the Lakers right now is who's going to be the person that has the ball in their hands the most. I Right now is D'Angelo Russell, and that's a problem for me. And if people watched the Lakers' first game of the season, they could hear LeBron. LeBron was mic'd up in game one. And that, that Denver game, and they talk, he talked to his assistant coach by the bench, uh, Phil Handy, and he made a comment about, you guys do know I can play the point, right? And you can put me at the point guard, and you could put um, – 
Austin Reeves in there, and you could put uh, Tory and Prince, and you could put Rui Hachimura in there. So they got issues. Uh, I like D'Angelo Russell, but I don't like him for the Lakers. I don't think his style is uh, beneficial to their team. Uh, he's more of a scoring mentality point guard. So I think they're going to have to get that worked out. For me personally, I would like to see the ball more in uh, Gabe Vincent's hand, who's with the new team, who was with the Miami Heat last year. He's gotten off to a rough start because it's a new system for him as well. Coming from Eric Spolstra to Darvin Ham, it's a totally different system. And then you have LeBron James now. So you got a superstar. Uh, Jimmy Butler's a star, but he's not on the level of LeBron. And Bam Adebayo is not either. So now you come to the Lakers, you got Anthony Davis and you got LeBron. Um, what they need to do is take the ball out of D'Angelo Russell's hands so much, put it in more in Austin Reeves' hands, put the ball in LeBron's hands. So basically what I'm saying is they need to move the ball. No one needs to be well, dominating yeah. the ball. Oh, that's I'm getting to the point. Nobody, because LeBron is used to dominating the ball, as you know. And see, I don't want to see him get back to the dominating the ball action because they, they got two good of they, they got Torrey and Prince and all those guys can play. So they got to figure out, though, in the clutch, say the fourth quarter, who's going to be the guy that initiates the offense? And that's the only I, thing I think they need to figure out. I, I, I like what you said because, uh, I mean, I, we talked before. Uh, I was hard on the legs last year, but I have to admit, from – the trade deadline last year to, to the off season and, you know, adding a, a, a guy, you know, a couple of guys. Um, and I love Hachimura, you know, um, I mean, I think that they're a good team. I like the Lakers as they're currently constructed. I kind of agree with you on, you know, uh, who's good. Who's going to run the offense, who are they going to run the offense through? Uh, and it shouldn't be LeBron. Um, I don't think that it should be uh, Austin Reeves either, only because if I'm coaching, I want I know he could do more than come off of, of, of screens, you know, but I want him to be playing off the ball. You know, that's just me. I want him playing off the ball. So can I say until they come up. I why, can I say this while you're on Austin yeah, Reeves? Yeah, thing? go ahead. The, the only reason I think, you know, I do want him playing off the ball some, but you also got to remember this. He's one of the best players in the pick and roll. So when you put him with the ball, well, yeah, and true him and Anthony Davis with the pick and roll, he can he can hit the mid-range shot. He's a really good passer. He can get in the paint. So I want him to Fair just they, they have to be selective when they do this. It's the same with LeBron. They got to be selective. LeBron's what, in his 21st year now? So Darwin has to make sure it can't always be LeBron and AD, LeBron and AD. They brought in Cam Reddish. And as you know very well, Cam Reddish, you know who he is. They he brought, in, ja they brought in Jackson play. Hayes. They Jackson brought in Hayes Gabe Benz. Right. They brought in Gabe Benz and they brought in Torian Prince, who's in the starting lineup all right, already. So you got to make sure you incorporate all these guys into the system. And if they do that, if, it's, if they don't play AD and LeBron ball, if they don't get caught up in that, then they have a chance to go far. But we know how things can go. It can go this way or that way. If LeBron and AD continue to stay team players and keep all the other guys incorporated, then that's the best Laker team. That that gives them an opportunity to go far. I'm still not going to say they're going to win it I all, mean, but it gives them a they, chance. They've to got end. a shot. I mean, and don't get me wrong, I don't believe in them right now to go any further than the uh, semifinals in the Western Conference. That's right now. Um, and I think, you know, one of the, I, you know, I, I just think that when you're an LA team, when you're a New York team, in just about any sport, you know, when you, I mean, the light is already shining bright on you, all right? But when you start all that damn chirping, <laughs> you know, I mean, and and then to not deliver is just not a good good look. Now again, I understand it's very early in the season. <laughs> hey, <I> Mac, yeah. <laughs> this why this what? why you don't talk stuff. Okay, let me say this quickly: why you don't talk stuff. 
if you go back a few years, okay, the current MVP is Joel Embiid, right? Mm -hmm. If you go back a few years ago, they were playing, uh, Joel Embiid was doing what they called a helicopter, like Mark Jackson. Yeah, yeah. So, And then we see how that went, right? So Joel's doing all the celebrating, and then what happens in the playoffs? Isn't that the same guy we saw on television actually crying, literally yeah. crying? Yeah, yeah. That's why you don't do put yourself out there like that, because you always have to remember it doesn't. It can always reverse on you and go the other way. And I always believe you just play the game. You don't have to do all the talking or uh, as Steph's doing now. You know, first it was rock the what put the baby. What is he putting the baby to sleep and all that? Yeah, now he's doing the home alone stuff. If you saw yeah. the other day, I, I'm just, just never been the a game. I've never been a fan of all of that hot dog. And man, now, just play the game. Let your actions speak for you. Now, you know, we, you know, hopefully turning off the younger generation by saying this. But, you know, I mean, it's true. I mean, I'm y'all take a look at some video. Go to YouTube. Look at video footage of guys like Julia Serving, Walt Frazier, uh, you know, Kareem. Uh, even, even, you know, you can even go further back when they were even more stoic, you know, uh, guys acted like they did it before that, like they've had success before, you know, these guys today, you know, they, they got to put up the jersey and beat their chest. And if, if they dunk, oh my God, they got to stand over the person, you know, and that that's that's uh that's grounds for fisticuffs right there, you know. What about but, the crossover, uh, Mac? What about what they call it when the guy falls down? They cross you over and all that nonsense, and the guy fall down, and the guy got to look at you before he yeah, shoots the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that all, all that hot dog, and man, I don't. I've never yeah. liked that. Just, just respect make your play. Respect the game and respect your opponent. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's uh that folks is what you call old school basketball, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you want to beat them to submission, but you respect your opponent. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead because it's already, we're already half an hour in. We got to give some love to the Eastern Conference. Um, I've got two screens up right now. Nick's leading the Cavaliers going into halftime, 50 to 40. 50-48, and uh, the Nets and the Heat are playing in Miami. They haven't put up the score yet there. Um, all right, well, we'll get back to that in a moment. But, uh, you yeah, know, there are a number, you know, number of games. Go okay, so uh, Miami spanking Brooklyn 53-39 with a buck 32 and a half. All right, so that's a little bit of an uh, update. And why the New York teams? Because I'm from New York and I just happen to have these games on. You know, sue me. But anyway, um, <laughs> so another team. Uh -oh. Talk, to me, about, talk uh -oh. to me about the Minnesota Timberwolves because <sighs> I don't know what to make of this team. So I'm, I'm going to yield. <laughs> They're they're not as talented as the Clippers have been over the years, but they kind of that same type of team. That you, you just always it's kind of like Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will. It just seems like every time you think they turn the corner, they just fall back down. And um, you know that part of that I'm gonna say, and I hate to say it because I like Rudy Gobert, but when they made that trade with Utah, and they gave away half their team and half about. 56 draft picks and all that, man, it, it came back to haunt them. So I guess their intention was to try to have a twin towers with Rudy Gobert and, and Carl Anthony Towns. But yeah. as we know, that, that's not going to work because as you know that um, I don't even know if Ben, if uh, Rudy Gobert is better than Ben Simmons offensively, to be honest. And, and, and it frustrates players like Anthony Edwards. They got an all-star on their roster who will be an all-star this year, Anthony Edwards. But I know it gets frustrating because you never know what Rudy Gobert is going to um, show up that night. 
you because you can get in the paint and you can throw the big man the ball near the rim and you can't guarantee he's gonna catch it or you throw him bounce pass. He, he just has seemed like he has small hands and he he loses a lot of balls, so it, it gets frustrating. And then as you know, he's been sat down the last two years when it comes playoff time. He's he's been a liability on the offensive end. So it ends up that he's sitting on the bench. And so that's held them back. And then, of course, Carl Anthony Towns has been in and out of the lineup with injuries. And then when he's healthy, he's, uh, what, about seven feet, but he wants to live at the three-point line. Uh, you remember last year he said he wanted to be the best three-point shooter in the league. That kind of nonsense. So when the guys are talking like that um, about the individual things that they want to accomplish, that tells me they're not uh, all bought into the team concept. And when you're not bought in, and you know, in this league, man, you got to be all in. Every player from 1 to 15 has to be on the same path, on the same page. And if you're not that, you're not going to do very well. And that's where I see Memphis. I mean, I'm sorry, that's where I see the Timberwolves, Minnesota. And that's where I've seen them the last uh, couple years. I'm hoping it changes because I want to see Anthony Edwards in the playoffs. But I also want to see them be able to advance. And looking at them right now, um, we still don't know what's going on with, I mean, Carl Anthony Town. I hear his name in trade talks. So until all of that is shored up, they take care of all that. We don't know. Um, it's not like when the guys are on the trade deadline. You hear when you hear your name in trade talks, that's not a, usually a player that always responds in a positive way. And that's not. Well, let me just jump in to say this. Since you brought up Carl Anthony Towns and trade rumors in the same breath, let me say this. <laughs> That's another stupid trade rumor involving the Knicks. Stop with that. Just stop it. I knew you had heard it. <laughs> oh, my God. It, I knew you had heard it, man. <laughs> all right. Let's, let, let's move on with the Eastern Conference because I, I, I've had enough of this stupid trade. <laughs> we're gonna, I, I, I promise we're going to get to stupid trade rumors in a little bit. Uh, let's talk about the Nets and the Bucks and the Celtics real quick. All right. Let's start with the Nets. I, I'm i glad Ben Simmons is back. How about that? And um, he's playing quite well. I don't know why people are expecting Ben Simmons to put up 15 to 20 points a game. That's not who he is. Ben Simmons is a guy where I'll take 10 points a night, eight rebounds and eight assists, and he's going to defend on the other end. And, and that's what people I'm need to realize. I'm thinking 12 and 10. Well, 12, I'll take yeah. that. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not expecting a 16, 17 points a night from Ben Simmons. That's not being no. realistic. No. The good, no. the good thing is um, it's giving Mikael Bridges a chance to show who he is uh, since he left Phoenix last year. Uh, Cam Johnson. Cam has, got, has been awesome. Yes. Or no, you talking about Cam. I'm talking about Cam Johnson right now. That was with Phoenix. And then I'll get to Cam Thomas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cam Thomas is who you're talking about, who's putting yeah, up 30 right. Who right now is averaging 33 a game. So, did, did you have that on your bingo cards? I've been a fan <laughs> of his, sir, for the last – I talked about him on my show two years ago when he came into the league. I, don't, I didn't understand from day one why he wasn't playing. This is when Steve uh, Nash was there. I do not understand why this young man was not playing, but they see him in practice more than me, so they would know better than me. But I know a score. I've been a score all my life, and I have a brother that's been a score all his life. I just couldn't figure out why they couldn't find room for him on the court because you need buckets. It's a scoring game today. I even saw something that you posted, Mac, and it surprised me, and you posted it recently because I we've talked about the game used to be defense wins championships, right? Hasn't the game somewhat changed now? We, we, we talked about this. Okay. You know. offense, offense wins, and I hope people hear me clearly. I'm not saying defense is not a factor. I'm saying offense wins today. Defensively, all you have to do is get some selective stops in the fourth quarter. You're not locking anybody down the style of play that they're playing today with the floor being so spread. So it's when you get timely stops. And so if you're expecting guys to be locked down, man-to-man, one-on-one defenders, 
That's far and in between. It's only a few of those. So it's just getting those timely stops. And if you do that, that's a team that's going to win. But remember, scoring is the name of the game today. That's why they keep opening up the game, spreading the floor, taking away the contact basically on the perimeter. And so, Cam, we talk about scoring. Right now, Cam Thomas is in the top five scorers in the league, and I'm happy to see the man playing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like I said, I, I mean, I knew he was good. I didn't know that he was quite this good. He's a walking bucket. I really bucket. didn't. He's and, a walking bucket. And, and I, I, I've been watching the Knicks fans, and that's, again, being that I'm in New York, I pay attention to them a lot. But um, he's been phenomenal these first few games. And if he could just get one guy to be Robin to his Batman, you know, you don't have to have a big three. Uh, you know, you don't have to stack the deck. You know, if you just got a, a, good, a, a good supporting cast, if you've got one Robin and some other guys in there sprinkled in, you know, uh, with the Nets, I, I think they can make some noise. I, I, I'm i not going to say that they're going to go any farther than, say, seventh or eighth place. Seventh or eighth I, think they, I, I, I agree with you with that. Yeah, but you see, remember, they, now, they can, have a Robin, Mac. They do have a Robin, Mikael Bridges, who we thought uh, the team was going to be here. Well, yeah, yeah. But they need a little more. They, you know, they need a little more. Um, I like the big fella. Uh, he's a little really still thin. They center. The big guy, he's really thin, but they're a team. I just don't think they're deep enough, but I'm like you. They play hard for 48 minutes, and they're a team that could sneak into a seventh or eighth seed. And if they did that, yeah. man, that's my team. That's they'll the get team to I the play in, and they'll probably bump off, you know, one or two teams, you know. Um, well, you I, know I, that's I, my I mean, team, Max. Shot, I don't know if the listeners know. That's the team I play for. We, I'm a New Jersey net. They're in Brooklyn now, but it's the same organization. It's so the same organization. I, 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 want, I want to see them do well. And then let me say this. Um, I'm also glad to see Spencer Dinwiddie get another opportunity um, in, with, the, with the Nets. You know, he was in uh, Dallas last season, or year before midseason, before the trade. So I was glad he came Brought in the Kyrie. Back. Yeah, he came in the Kyrie trade. So I'm glad to see Spencer come in and get a chance to shine again. And I want to see him do well. And I want to see the team do well. I want to see Jock Vaughn do well. I just think there are a few pieces, one or two. Uh, Nick Claxton is he a really good coach. player. Yeah, they just want to – they just want to – I think they're one or two players, like a Zach Levine and maybe one more player away from uh, – one big and one uh, forward, I'll say, from being a contending team. So uh, they're exciting to watch, though. They play hard. They – they are what the game is yeah. about. You, you, all these players get paid a lot of money, and so these are one of the, that's one of the teams that earn their money. They play hard for forty eight minutes. They're taking on a chin right now. They're down ten at halftime to Miami, but uh, I, I don't think that that game is over. Certainly not ten. You can make up ten points with a quick run in the third quarter, and now you're thinking, mm -hmm. "Gee, we got a shot." You, you know how that is. Especially against Miami because they're not like a team that's going to be regularly putting up 130 points. Yeah, this is true, too. Okay, so uh, I said I wanted us to talk about the Bucks. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's Giannis. It's the Giannis show, right? It has so, been the last couple of days, the last couple yeah. of games. Yeah. So, uh I, I, I guess there's not a whole lot to say, and I guess that's my point. There's not a whole lot to say because there, there's no real element of surprise. We know who Giannis is. And, you know, uh, I think we know who the Bucks are. Bucks are going to be there at the end. I don't think they're going to – I don't know that they got enough to beat Boston right now. But, again, it's early. It's very early. Okay, so uh, – I, you know, I got to go back to the West just for a minute. I got to mention my Sacramento Kings. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're going to, they're going to the Final Four in their conference. If I they're believe that. To, they're going to the Final Four in their conference. I've seen, I've seen enough to make me believe that this is the year where they kind of turn the corner. 
I mean, the, 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 the physical ability has been there, but now it's really about, you know, from the neck up. And, you know, I, I think this is the year where they turn that corner. Then they're going to be, well, you know, everybody's brother's going to be better than the Clippers. I'm sorry. I just don't have a lot of faith in them right now. But the Kings are going to turn the corner this year. They're going to finish about for the regular season. I have them finishing about where they finished last year. Uh, they were the third seed. They ended up behind Denver and Memphis, if you remember last season. So they were uh, – I, for... I think they got shot to even go higher. I think. I mean, well, it's going to be, it depends on the reason I, I say third is because I think uh, with, with a he healthy uh, Bradley Bill and Devin Booker and KD, I think they're going to have, Phoenix is going to have a really good regular season. And I think at this point, Mike Brown, as you know, Mike Brown was with uh, the Warriors before he got to Cleveland. So I think Mike Brown, I mean, before he got to the Sacramento, I think Mike Brown is about preparing mentally for the, for the long haul. The playoffs. So if you can get a third seed, that still gives you home court advantage in most of your series. And it also preserves guys like Sabonis and Harrison Barnes. Uh, you know, Harrison Barnes has some tread on the tires now. So yeah. you still want to keep him ready because he's still an integral part of the team. And you got the other guys, the young guys, Keegan Murray, of course, my guy who should have been first team all NBA last year. Uh, yes, I'm said again. First team All NBA, De'Aaron Fox, who's averaging 31 points a game, um, and not so. I do. I'm here with you, and I he think might be I, the, he might be the best one in the league right now. He might be the best player in the league. Mac, if, if the NBA don't they if they don't stop with the popularity awards, see what bothered me is last year Shea Gildress and Luca were the guards in the in the uh, for the All NBA first team, right? Now, I didn't have a problem with Shea because without him, Oklahoma City might have had the, one of the worst records in the entire league. They still ended up as a 10th seed, but they did ascend. And that's partly because of Shea. But De'Aaron Fox, man, it breaks my heart to see them keep overlooking this young man. He's averaging 31 right now. And I'm going to show you someone that doesn't overlook him because he just signed him two days ago to a shoe deal. A guy by the name of Steph Curry. So Steph realizes how good this young man, not, I won't even say good, how great a player he is. And the only thing, only thing that I'm skeptical about, Mac, is um, Mr. Sabonis. How is he going to respond when they play? Because if you know they lost to Golden State again recently, right? And uh, Steph had 40 and Fox had 39, I believe. So they got that little thing they got to get over with uh, Golden State. And the biggest part of that is how is Sabonis going to respond when Draymond starts elbowing him upside the head or Looney starts attacking him physically? That's so my Sabonis, only Sabonis doesn't have the uh, – and I'm not saying this as a knock, but he doesn't quite have the mental makeup of his dad. Does he remind you of A.D.? <laughs> Does he remind me of AD? Anthony Davis. One day he's superstar. Next day he's right in um, the middle. Remember well, now he made all of our I didn't think of that until now. I get yeah, I mean, I didn't think of that. I didn't think of make comparison, but I get what you're saying. Um and I mean, in all fairness, sometimes it's United, sometimes it's not. I, I get it. But yeah, you might have a point there. there. There's no other center behind Yo, behind other than Jokic, that has the potential to average close to a triple double or near a triple double, and that's Mr. Sabonis, Demontis Sabonis. That's why I brought that up. So yeah. until he gets over that mental hurdle of dealing with Draymond and Looney, to me, that's the only thing holding them back. I think they, I would put them over any other team in the West come playoff time, including the Phoenix Suns. The only team that worries me about them is getting to Denver. To get to Denver, they'll probably have to go through Golden State. And if, and that's the only team that kind of scares me. That'll, that'll be a fun series if it gets to that. We got such a long ways to go, though. But it's fun to kind of fantasize about certain matchups. I think Sacramento and Golden State would be a fun matchup. You know, uh, 
there's a few others that'll be fun to look at during I I I you know going back to the east, I think the Pacers are a fun team. Yeah, hey sir, that's my well right now for me in the in the in the east, I have Boston. Well, we talked about it. That's our surprise team. That's our I, surprise I'm, pick. I have a hey, Boston. The the four teams that we were to go in, uh, for the playoff, that's my team. That's okay, Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, and Atlanta Hawks. I mean, not Atlanta Hawks. The um, Indiana Pacers are my team. I love Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, when he came out in the draft, it was only one player I talked about that year in the draft, and he's the guy. I just saw something special in him. So that that's the surprise team. I hope people are watching the – uh, Indiana Pacers, and then uh, you notice I keep saying Atlanta Hawks, Mac, because I got to say, something tells me this year they're going to finally be one of the kind of like the team people have been looking for with Trey Young. Um, I see the De- De- uh, DeJounte Murray had 41 or something the other night, and Trey had about 24. So I think those two teams are going to surprise a lot of teams, and I'm not saying they're going to finish over your New York Knicks, but they're going to be right there in the conversation. No, I, I, you know, uh, as long as they have Young and Murray, they got a shot, you know, uh, to be a good team. Um, they're not championship caliber, but they certainly have a shot to be a good ball. Good to pull to off an upset or something in the first round. Well, we saw last year that teams can be upset. We've been seeing that. We saw Milwaukee get bumped off. Uh, and then we see Miami go to the finals. So it, it's going to be interesting. And that's what makes the NBA so much fun. Yeah. Okay, so we've got four minutes, and now we're going to get to my favorite segment. <laughs> that it's won't take long. Hey, <laughs> rumors. This is where I get the chance to <laughs> rant and rave and gripe about the stupid trade rumors after, well, I mean, three games into the season, but even before the season started, all during the off season. I had to listen to all the BS about Joel Embiid is coming to the Knicks. James Harden is coming to the Knicks. Zion Williamson is coming to the Knicks. <laughs> Will you, uh, Knicks fans, I love you. I'm a Knicks fan as well. But will you all please, please stop with this. Stop with the clickbait. Stop buying into the foolishness. First of all, why do we want Zion? The man has not stayed on the court. I know you have different feelings about it. I'm just saying, I'm just stating facts right now. The man hasn't been able to stay on the court for a full season. All right? So as much as I've gotten after Julius Randle about some of the boneheaded things that he's done on the court and the turnovers, and by the way, I think he's played very well this year despite his numbers being down. He's sharing the ball. He's making quicker decisions. I like that. But uh, but back to the rumors. I'm not gonna make that because if you get if you get signed to trade to Julius, I'm not making that trade. What about the name you're gonna hear soon? Uh Zach Levine. Another stupid how does he fit in? <laughs> it look, all they talk about in New York is we need a defensive stopper. I don't buy that. I think it's both flying residue or cow manure of the male kind. I'm being nice. Like we talked about, offense is what we need. And so pace is what the Knicks need. All right? I don't want to even hear about defense because Tom Thibodeau is supposed to be this defensive genius. And the other night he gave up 130 points. to Was it to the Celtics? Well, they're they going to have some games. They're going to give up 130. Yeah, I, 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 and I understand yeah. that. But, what, but here, okay, I'm just talking, though, about giving up so many open three-point shots. I'm not talking about whether the team makes or misses them. The Cavs had a lot of open three-point shots that they ordinarily would knock down. They were open, all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Knicks probably would have won anyway with half those shots that were missed. They probably win the game anyway. It would have been a lot closer, all right? But I digress. Back to the stupid trade rumors, all right? The 76ers taking my glasses off of this. All you Knicks fans, the 76ers <laughs> are not N-O-T. They are not going to give uh, 
the next Joel and B under any circumstances. So stop buying into that foolishness. Please stop. Oh my God. Uh, Zion Williamson. Why do y'all want Zion Williamson when he hasn't uh, demonstrated the ability to stay on the court for the majority of the games in the regular season? Why do you want to do that? Your time is RJ Barrett. Bar you want to get player, out RJ Barrett. Barrett's averaging 22 points a game and you want to get rid of him? Where would the Knicks be right now if they didn't have him? You know why they talk about Zion, because he's a marquee name. Even though he hasn't been healthy, they think he would bring people to the stadium, the arena. Uh, I, I'm not saying I agree, but you know how they Derek, talk about guys. You know what I'm going to say. Name. You know what I'm going to say. I don't like to assume. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Then let, me, let me break it down. Nick fans have seen this movie before. Go out and get a superstar. Gut the team for this guy. Only for him to not perform up to expectations. Or even if he performs off and you know, gets his numbers, the team suffers. And as a result, the Knicks have continuously flopped, fell on their face. Don't, don't get me going through a list of ball Well, Mike, you, if you look at it, they got like 20 draft picks. I mean, come on. The reason you, you start acquiring all those draft picks are so you can use them to get a superstar. I agree. Well, well, well wait, now, see, I understand what you're saying. You've got, a, you know, an overabundance of draft picks. Fine. So if you're going to trade them. See, I'm, I'm a strong you, – you talked about the Nets and, and a lack of depth, you know, um, I believe in depth. So I think you could possibly use some of them draft picks to strengthen that bench. You, I mean, the Knicks are all right in the star line. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing them get an upgrade in the backcourt. I love Quentin Grimes. Don't get me wrong. And you don't even have to get a starter. All right. But I'd like to see them get another guy who can absolutely shoot the ball. Give me a flame throw like Austin Reeves. I'm not saying Austin Reeves. He's off the market. Saying somebody like that, where you know if he gets the ball in his hands, and if you give him just a little bit of daylight, it's all the A name Zach Levine. Well, you're talking about a 25 point score basically every year, Matt. And a guy that likes see, here's the thing the reason I say Zach Levine is because when you and I talk away from the television, well, off of the screen, right off Zoom. When we talk on Messenger, don't we talk about you You want the Knicks to pick up the pace, right? This is true. So when you have a player like Zach Levine, doesn't that pick up the pace? Yeah, he's a guy he, does. Likes to play, he likes to get out in the in the court. He likes to run the floor he does. once they get the ball off the backboard. And that's the, and he's not a bad passer. That's the only reason I brought him up. Um, I think he's a, he would be a ray of sunshine in New York. Uh, the guy's a proven scorer. He's uh, pretty consistent. Uh, if I remember correctly, he had 50 points the other day. I didn't like he didn't have any assists. He got 50 <laughs> points? He had zero I'm... assists, though. Yeah, a few nights ago he had 50, but he had zero assists. I didn't even catch that. Usually I catch it. I, I, I didn't even uh, hear about that. I'm going to have to look at the box score. But, um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, Levine's a terrific ball player. Don't get me wrong. I, got, I, I like him in Chicago. I, I, the I, reason I, I like the only reason I say Knicks though is because it, you want to play a faster pace, and to play a faster yeah. pace, you got to hire the players. Only thing is, if the only guy I wouldn't want them to lose if they did make a trade for Levine, I wouldn't want them to lose uh, Manuel Quigley because if you really look at it, other than Brunson, who's the only real true point guard? It's Emmanuel Quigley. So I, I agree. Want, if I had to give up, I would hate to see him give up Quentin Grimes. But you have to give up something to get something. And that's where draft picks may come in handy because you, you could give up draft picks and not lose any of your uh, core players. Okay, well, listen, it's 8.04, so we're a little bit over. Uh, but um, I do want you to take this opportunity again to talk about uh, what you're doing with the youth, you know, 
um, I think it's important that we keep hammering that home and we need to talk about that. So uh, tell us again, remind us about what you're doing in the San Antonio community and surrounding areas. Well, and I haven't uh, been coaching or anything lately, but um, I'm actually in the process right now of trying to set up a camp for November. So I can, uh, you know, kind of reintroduce myself to the young people that haven't seen me the last few months. So I was fortunate to get some dates today. Uh, now it's just a matter of picking out the dates. Uh, but for the listeners, what I've done is um, I, I had a team. I started a team called Team Gervin. And it's not George Gervin, it's Derek Gervin. Uh, I was in a suburb here in San Antonio. And so right outside of San Antonio, we have a suburb called Bernie. And so I went out there and I worked uh, with a partner of mine who's also from Michigan. He's from Draymond Green City, from Saginaw, Michigan. And so we started the program and I was working with him. So I, that didn't uh, work out the way we wanted it to. And sometimes, you know, stuff happened when you're dealing with parents and, you know, uh, uh, getting a gym and all that stuff. So I decided to move on. So I moved on with my team, Gervin. Um, I started working with my family at the George Gervin Youth Center. Uh, after a while, I moved on from that because I'm the type of guy I want to do my own thing. So right now, I'm getting I'm ready to uh, set up this camp for uh, Thanksgiving. And I want to get some more kids, you know, on my program. And I, I don't even want to coach now because, you know, the uh, high school season is going on. But what I want to do is be going to these games and start scouting these young players. And the reason I'm telling you that is because – I have a friend here uh, that used to play with the San Antonio Spurs, uh, Jaron Jackson Sr. He's working with the school down here. Uh, I won't say they're our rival. I went to University of Texas, San Antonio. Jaron is currently working for Incarnate Word down here in San Antonio. And so I want to be uh, helping Jaron and these guys, Incarnate Word, as far as finding players. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to be going out. I'm hoping to be a scout. Who knows? One day I might be a scout, a jack of all trades if possible. But I'm going to be helping. Now. I'm going to try to set up this camp um, in November, uh, a Derek Gervin camp. And, you know, talk to the young people about fundamentals. And as you know, Mac, I'm big on the books about taking care of you. I, I believe in if you can be a, a student athlete, that you can be a scholar athlete. And that's why I want to get back into the flow like, ASAP and start talking to these kids because we got a lot of uh, parents that put pressure on these young people. And I'm sorry to see that. And as you know, I wrote uh, yesterday, I posted about stop, you know, it's not fair to, for you to try to live through your kids. And, you know, sometimes people want a little more that's, they're not realistic about the opportunity. Um, I had someone ask yesterday, they said their kids can't make a, a, a layups by themselves, Mac. They can't make layups by themselves. So they were like, so what do I do? And my response was, well, if they're not going to be basketball players, you know, there is a thing called trying to get an academic scholarship. So there are many things that you can do. It doesn't have to be just put all your eggs in one basket. And so I think people do that too much. Parents want that. Everybody want that quick dollar. You see all these players making the 50 millions and all of that. But there's a process to get there. And if your child is not, your child might not even be interested in sports. And I just don't think it's fair. I'm not the parent, but I don't think it's fair to the child for you to try to force something on them that's not what they want to do. We want to, just like we want to achieve the American dream, I also think it's fair to give these kids their own independence to the point <laughs> they can try to reach the American dream. And that means not living through your child. Let your children be children. And that's my whole point. Don't don't try to put your expectations on them. They might not want to do what you want them to do in life. That's why they have their own life. Give them an opportunity to be themselves. Yeah, you, you got to, you, you know, uh, they will be happy. They, the kids, they will be happy uh, just in getting the support from their parents in whatever it is that they choose to do. And it doesn't have to be sports. You know, we're a sports show, so that's why we, you know, that's why we bring attention to that. But uh, there was this fellow named Luther Wright from Elizabeth, New Jersey. I have Jersey. a Seton Hall, sir. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, uh, you know guy, well, I, when I lived in Elizabeth, when I lived in Elizabeth, uh, you know, 
I didn't know him, of course, but I know that, um, you know, my, you know, my son used to go there. You know, my, well, that's a whole other story. But anyway, uh, you know, and he used to tell me about Luther Ray, you know, and, um, you know, and then to see how he came out and played in the NBA, I mean, there were rumblings that he really felt like he was being forced into it and he really didn't want to do it. And he didn't have a long career yeah, as a result of it. Thing, yeah, you so yeah, and it's sad when you even bring him up because I um, you know, I I played in New Jersey. So Luther played in Seton Hall, which is which is um down the street from me basically. It was in Newark Seton Hall is in Newark, New Jersey. I lived yeah. five minute a five minute drive from Newark, okay? So I used to go uh, get barbecue and um I also knew Luther's coach, PJ Carlissimo. PJ Carlissimo. And, and if that name sounds familiar to the listeners, is because PJ is the one that had the incident with uh, Latrell Spreewell. The choking well, incident. On, on, on a more pleasant note, PJ Carlissimo is also a, a color commentator on uh on radio for the NBA. But when oh, he's ESPN, a very good guy. I think. He's a very good guy. But back to but Luther, um, I used to see Luther, Mac, when I go to the barbecue place. So I got to talk to him a few times. And a lot of people don't know because they see the big old guy that he was. But the guy was like a teddy bear, man. Teddy and that's bear. what I want people to know about him. Um, sometimes you get a certain perception of a player just by looking at him. But I yeah. just want people to remember that you don't you don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know him, but uh, I just know what I know about him. But yeah, you're right. Okay, so we talked about your uh, your, your your program, what you're doing in the community, and um, you know what I will say is uh, I've got something going on. You see the M3 TV uh, uh, logo behind me. Uh, M3 TV Mac Multimedia Network. That's where it comes from, and uh, that's mine. I I founded that. But in addition to that, um, I'm, I've got a basketball league called the American Basketball League. We start play uh, this coming spring in 2024. Um, and the idea we're not calling ourselves a professional league. We're sticking with the term minor league, uh, but we're going to start play in the springtime. Meanwhile, I too have a tournament that's coming up. Uh, I'm just considering a Thanksgiving tournament since it's close to Thanksgiving. Oddly enough, it's the weekend of uh, uh, Veterans Day, but I I chose to to, uh, highlight Thanksgiving. But, uh, you know, no reason that both can't be highlighted, I guess. But in any event, it's for teenagers, 14 to 17. If you're in the San Antonio area, uh, you know, go to, I'll tell you what, go to sanchez-claire.com or you can go to ablonline.net. Go to either web and just follow the tab and you can register to play in the tournament. Okay. So uh, that's just a quick heads up. But, uh, back. Let, me say, let me let me say that's a great that's a great age that's a great thing you're doing and I want to commend you 14 to 17 year olds they need they need our guidance today and uh, the reason I like the ages that you picked is because a 17 year old what's their next step it's a new world they say they headed to the college life so that's I think that's a the, I'm, I want to commend you and I mean that from the bottom sure. of my heart. I think that's a great age. Those are the ages that well, we need to be helping right now. We help all the young people, but you're setting them up for something new, and they're ready to go into a new life. They're ready to enter college, and I, I just think that's great. And I'm hoping I could be a part of. It. Well, you will be. You, um, at least, hopefully, you're available on uh, the 12th. Um, but, you know, with respect to whatever your schedule is. If I remember correctly, sir, I'm going to tell you on the air before we get off. I'm a, If I remember correctly, I told you that I'm available for you 24-7. You did. Did okay. I not say that? You, yeah, okay. you did. I'm not, I'm not other people. When I say it, I mean it. So I let's, 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 and, and, let's, and I know let's that. Let's I'm just going to assume it by nature. Oh, I'm, telling the, no, I'm telling the listeners so they know me. 
If I tell you I'm 24-7, that's what I am. So I'm saying well, basically let's make it happen. Yeah, and, and you you have been, yeah, I mean, we we've we've talked uh just about any hour. So I'll talk uh, to you when Derek tells in the me that I believe it. <laughs> Anything Derek tells me, you know, uh, usually I'm gonna take it to the bank, you know. Uh, Derek is so convincing. I mean, he has so much credibility with me that he could tell me it's raining in rocks, and I believe it. You know, <laughs> but uh, you know, but but you know, I I do want to kind of pump you up just a little bit more in that you know, uh, your man, your word, your man, your word, and uh, you know that's important these days. You know, not everyone's like that. I want you know, to thank you, man. You you are trying to get me emotional. I'm gonna thank. I want to thank you. <laughs> Not just just state of fact. That's all. Just state of fact. But okay, we went a little bit over. I'm not gonna apologize for it. Uh, we are right now 16 minutes over. But um, I'm gonna allow you the final word. Uh, anything you think the listeners I'm, need I'm, to know. I'm going to be quick, really quick. I just want the people to continue to support you. Um, and like I said at the beginning of the show, I want your show to take off. So I want it to continue to grow uh, day by day. So like I said earlier, if the listeners just tell a friend um, and they'll take out, they'll check out the show and they'll decide if they want to come back or not. But if you got to remember, we have to support each other. And I mean, yes, that, uh, and I'm a, this is a business Max running here. He's going to be running. And as you know, and I'm going to say this, we talk about supporting black businesses. Well, this is a start right here. This is an opportunity. So I hope people um, will come out of their comfort zone, I'll say, and you know, tell friends about the show, and then we'll all watch the show grow together. So I just want to thank you and tell you, man, I love you. Um, you're a love friend. Love you back, you're the best. Friend, and, and, I, and I love what you're doing. Well, right back at you, you know, and, and uh, you know, you've got uh, – you you you've got you've got quite the following, you've got quite the following, and you know not only from those who are my age who remember when you played, but you know what you've done to uh, get these kids. And they, I, I know, you know, I mean, I haven't seen it in person, but trust me when I tell you that I know how much the kids are drawn to you. You know, because kids today. Uh, well, kids, kids in general, you know, they want that discipline. They want that guidance, you know. And so what you have done is with the kids in San, the San Antonio area. And you see uh, that shirt, man. And, and you yes, thank indeed. you. And you know, you know I'm, a, uh, I'm a born Detroiter. I'm Detroit, Michigan. I was born and raised. But I'm wearing this shirt here. Um, my brother did something good by having his family uh, come down to San Antonio. And as you know, all kids are important to me, all young people. But I'm repping the San Antonio Spurs tonight, and I'm representing the city of San Antonio. And I'm giving you an opportunity. I'm thanking you for even giving me the opportunity to come on your show. Yes, Our indeed. Show, I'm going to say. I, I'm yeah, not gonna I was going to say, hey, wait a minute. I, I, I mean, uh, you know, if any of y'all are paying attention, when I post these little promos on Facebook, you know, uh, I make sure to highlight Derek Gervin uh, in the promo. And that's not, you know, that's not false hype or anything like that. You know, Derek, in my mind, is uh, is the expert. You know, mm -hmm. uh, he has had experiences that I only dreamt of, but never, you know, never got to that level. Uh, so, yeah, he's the expert. Whether he wants to admit that or not, <laughs> you know, I, I can understand his modesty, but you all know who you're going to listen to. If Derek and I are having a conversation and if we disagree on a certain point, I mean, yeah, I hope you all at least hear me out. But already going in, I know that if I if I counter Derek's going to counter right back. And at that point, he's going to shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're a good, we're a good combination, man. How about that? Oh yeah, we, we are, you know, uh, but I, 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 you know, 
I, I know that uh, one of the things that I think that I'm supposed to do is set you up so that you are in a position so you could give your opinions, give your insight, you know? Uh, every now and then I'll throw in my own thoughts, of course, but I really want to give you as much room as possible, you know? But uh, anyway, okay, so, man, it's it's, it's 20 hours. Uh, we're going to shut this down. Thanks again, as always, Derek. Uh, you guys, you know, remember to uh, check out Derek. He's got another podcast called As Good As It Gets. I want y'all to check that out. You can look for him on Facebook. Uh, Derek Gervin, As Good As It Gets. Um, on that show, he has managed to get some some stars on there. We'll we'll work on that here, but everything is a process. He's had guys such as Ray Scott, uh, you know, former NBA coach. Uh, played in the old ABA, a teammate of Julius Irving's. Uh, I think you had Oscar. Did you have Oscar? Oscar, Robertson? Oscar I've had Oscar Robertson, uh, Dick Vitale, Dr. J, George Irving, uh, Alvin Robertson, Ricky Pierce, Dale Ellis, Terry. I can go on and on. I'll be talking for a while. Antoine Carr. I've had many, many. And and I hope to, you know, uh, I hope that you could get some of your guys to come on our show here. Well, that's the goal. Uh, Doc and uh, yeah. George haven't been on your show, so I um, I know Dr. J's uh, nephew, so I'll reach out to him. And uh, if I can get guys like that to come on the show, uh, Ricky Pierce calls me regularly. So if I, you know, Ricky's one of, to me, he's in the top five or 10, I say 10, uh, six men that ever played, six men off the bench that ever played. So people like yes, that. Uh, so, you yes, know, I can get Ricky, but we'll, you know, we'll take it one day at a time. And I'll do the best I can. And I believe it'll happen. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to close the show with saying just two words, Mac Calvin. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow night on as good as it gets, uh, 9 PM Eastern, 8 PM Central. All right. 6 PM Pacific. Okay. Mac Calvin will be on my show tomorrow night. And okay. those people that don't know quickly, Mac is an ABA legend. He's one of the best guards to ever play. Not in the Mac ABA. Claire, Mac Calvin. <laughs> and Mac is one of the best players to ever play um, in the ABA. He's also a guy that played with the Los Angeles Lakers. And uh, it's good for me to be able to talk to Mr. Calvin. Uh, he's 74 years old now. And just the fact to have someone like him call me, he actually called me Sunday. So just to have those type of people and Mac Claire in my life, um, I've been blessed, and I, I thank the man above every day for it. Well, you know, first of all, folks, anytime you hear Matt Claire and Matt Calvin in the same sentence, <laughs> there must there must be a storm somewhere. But <laughs> but uh, yeah, Matt Calvin was one of my favorite guys to watch in the A. There, there was we got to talk about that one day too. So much talent came out of the ABA, man. It, it's just ridiculous. And, you know, uh, we, we're going to get to that. Well, next, next, next week, week, next next week, we talk about the Moses Malones and the Gervins and all those people, the Artist Gilmore. We get on that as well. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, you know, you have uh, an interesting perspective about the ABA because you kind of grew up around it. So we're definitely going to get into that. But listen, it is time to go. Uh, thank you again, Derek. Love you, love you, love you. You're the best. Uh, Till next time, this is Matt Claire for Derek Gervin saying, be blessed. Please, please, please remember to do something nice for somebody because right. you never know. That might change their day. That just might be what keeps them breathing. All right. I love you, Mike, and care. I thank you. Everybody stay safe out there.